All right, Panther fans, so and hockey fans, Ranger fans, everybody is welcome here. So with the Panthers getting ready to face the New York Rangers in the Eastern Conference Finals, uh, I'm going to have a bunch of content out over the next few days, but I wanted to start here with a comparison between Igor and Bob, or as I like to call him, Bubba. Um, I had a theory in my head, and then what I wanted to do was look at some, some of the numbers not deep, deep, deep analytics. That's not how my, it's not how we do it here. But I wanted to look at the numbers and see, okay, um, is the theory that I have in my head, is it is it viable? Now, obviously, I've seen all of Bob's games this year. I've been making Panther videos for eight seasons, so I've seen him just about all of the time that he's played with us. Um, I haven't watched a whole lot of the Rangers. I did see, obviously, um, the Rangers Canes series because. Kyle and I covered that. So I had a theory in my head that the way I kind of saw Igor versus Bobrovsky was that I think the high end, high end games, Bob is a little bit better on the high end, and that maybe Igor was a little bit more consistent in terms of putting out the same kind of performance on a regular basis. Hard to describe, but when I got into the numbers, um, there was a lot, there's a lot of things, and then there's a big tell at the end that could possibly make a difference. So, for starters, uh, these are regular season statistics, by the way, so far. We're going to get to playoff stuff at the back end of the video. But uh, Igor had 55 starts, Bob had 58 starts. They were impossibly almost the same. Igor, 36, 17, and two. Bob, 36, 17, and four. So, the only difference was two more overtime losses. For Bobrovsky, the numbers almost, I mean, as close to duplicate as you can get for two guys that are on different teams. Igor with a 2.58 goals against and a 9.13 save percentage. Bob, a smidge better at 2.37 and 0.915. Um, like I said, that's, that's almost as duplicate as you can get. Now, uh, in two games versus Florida, Igor had allowed six goals. In three games against the Rangers, Bob allowed eight goals. Igor faced 1,606 shots. Bob faced a grand total of 22 fewer shots in three more starts. So minor, minor differences here. Bob's, this, I mean, just a smidge better, right? Not, not by much, nothing that you can hang your head on. So now we get into some of the deeper numbers here. Now, Igor had four shutouts. Bob had six. Okay, so two more shutouts, three more starts. Uh, Igor allowed two goals or less in 27 games. Bob allowed two goals or less in 32 games. So a little bit better, a little bit better. Nothing major. Everything so far, Bob's just a hair better. Um, in games that... Uh, there were three or more goals scored. Igor allowed, uh, did that 15 times, and Bob only did it 10. So that's a little bit of a difference. Bob had three more starts. Igor allowed three or more goals 15 times. Bob, 10. That's, that's a noticeable difference, and it starts to get into what I had in the back of my mind. Now, save percentage-wise, 18 times Igor had a had a better than a 950, and nine times he had a worse than an 850. For Bob, 13 times he had better than a 950, and seven times he had less than an 850. So Igor actually had far more many games, far more many games. Igor had more games where his save percentage was way up there than Bobrovsky did. But Bob had a couple fewer games where the save percentage was really bad, uh, under under 850. So, you know, it's a little bit of back and forth here, right? Bob's a little bit better here. Igor's a little bit better here. I mean, this is this is almost as even as you could get to. And then I get here. Igor allowed four goals, a grand total of seven times. Bob allowed four goals, a grand total of eight times. Again, it's just this is as even as it can get until I get to this one thing. Igor allowed more than four goals eight times. 
Bob allowed more than four four goals only twice. Now I know everything plays into this defense and all of that, but I mean these are the stats. That's all I can go by. So Igor allowed more than four goals on 14.5% of his starts. Bob only allowed more than four goals on 3.4% of his starts. To put it in context of a playoff run, Igor allows more than four goals every seven games or once a series. Bob allows more than four goals once every 28 games, which is a full, the full maximum of playoff and, fa- and Stanley Cup final games that you can have. That's a big difference. Now, how has that played out in the playoffs so far? Because based on that, that's one thing that I could see with all the numbers so far. That's the only one that really sticks out like a sore thumb. 14.5% versus 3.4%. That's a big difference. That's a difference of more than 10%. Now, how has it worked out in the playoffs so far? Well, here you go. Uh, Igor has allowed 25 goals in 10 games. Bob has allowed 26 goals in 11 games. We're back to being even again. Igor has allowed two or fewer goals four times, but Bob has allowed fewer than two, two or fewer goals eight times. So double the amount of times. So Igor has given up a lot of games where it's three, 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 three. Now, so far in the playoffs, it's been a little bit different than the regular season. Igor has allowed more than four goals once, while Bob has allowed more than four goals twice, way above his normal average. Now, if you throw away the worst game that each of them had, Igor allowed 21 goals in nine games. Bob has allowed 20 goals in 10. It's, it's, it's so even. When you look at the save percentages and the goals against, Igor is 2.4. Bob is 2.37. Igor does have a significantly better save percentage at 9.23 versus 9.02. So what do I get from all of these numbers? So what I can see is I think Igor is playing about his game. Igor is playing pretty much the postseason stats that he's had so far, pretty much line up-ish with his regular season. So I think a little bit more consistency there. Bob, there's good news and there's bad news. The bad news is that so far in the playoffs, he's not – equaled his regular season output. Okay, the numbers are nowhere near as good, but that also means there's a lot of room for improvement there. And that's where I guess I'll hang my hat. Again, with Bobrovsky over the whole course of the season, only two times he allowed more than than four goals. He's already done it twice in these playoffs. Now, I'm not big on throwing games away, but the one game that does... um, you know, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth trying to sweep the Tampa Bay Lightning in Tampa. That game four, that's where there were six goals against. And I'm not discounting that. But the other part to that is Bob has allowed two or fewer goals eight times, including five times straight now against the Bruins. So it looks to me like Bob's poor-ish play is kind of behind him. And he's, he's starting to go on that upward arc. And if you've been a Panther fan or fan of this channel, you know that's kind of how Bob will run. Bob will have about two or three weeks where he's just obscene, and then he's going to have a bad week-ish. The latter half of the Tampa series, the little bit of the beginning there against Boston was kind of that week-ish of Bob was not really uh, as himself as we'd like him to be. But since then... He, he's been close to pretty much lights out. So where do I think this plays out in this series? Well, I think a lot of what's going on for Bobrovsky's save percentage is teams are not shooting as much. Now, one theory I have, and I haven't looked at this statistically, but one theory I have is when I watch Panthers play and we enter the offensive zone, we take a lot of shots, but a lot of times we will take a shot just to get the face off. We really don't have anything going. Maybe we want to get a different guy on. We don't have the players that we want. We really have something going. We'll just shoot it in the belly of the goaltender, get the face off because we do win a lot of draws. 
it's possible that the opposite has been the true for the Lightning and the Bruins, where they actually finally get into the zone, which is difficult enough to do against the Panthers. And they're not wanting to waste their shots because if Bob is seeing the shots, he's going to stop the puck, make the save, get a faceoff. And a lot of times that's going to lead to the Panthers winning the faceoff. And now we've got the puck. So I believe teams are shooting less against us right now because they want to wait until they've got a really good scoring opportunity. Now the Panthers defense has been giving up some grade A chances. Bob's made some saves. They've hit some posts. There's been some lucky sticks and skates that break up passes. Um, and the Rangers have been a little bit more kind of all over the place where, I mean, you saw it. They allowed the, the three goals uh, to Carolina in the one period. They've they've been playing really lights out periods, and then they'll play a period where you just kind of like, it's not the best hockey that they can play. How I think this plays out with the Panthers and Bruins, I said this before, I'll say it again. I'm going to have a series preview out, at least one. I'm trying to connect with some people. But what I like, what I see about these numbers between Bob and Igor, is I think Igor is just kind of like this right now, all right? He's, he's just, and that's not a bad thing. That's not a knock. He's allowing three goals quite more often than Bob is. Bob has been on this heater again, and we've already done this once earlier in the season. The Panthers, I forget what the number was, but I think it was 13 or 14 straight games. It might have been more, but it was at least 13, I believe, where we only allowed two goals or less. So we've seen this as a collective group before. What is going to make the difference is are the Rangers going to make good on their chances? I think that's where this series lies because in general, when a team has possession and the Panthers are playing defense in the zone, if Bob is able to see the puck, he's going to make a lot of the saves. Rangers are going to get their chances though. They're going to get their breakaways, they're going to get their two on ones and all of that because of the style that the Panthers play sometimes. If they make good on those chances, I think that's going to be the difference between the Rangers getting three or four goals a game versus the two that we typically allow. Flip side to that is the Rangers so far have not faced the team that has um, the ability, the way the Panthers do, to score in multiple ways. Okay, You want to keep us to the outside? We've got guys that can shoot. You want to, if, if you allow us to have traffic in front, we've got guys like Reinhardt, Rodriguez, Kachuk, right? With really high quality hand eye coordination where we can, you know, take a rebound and stuff it in. What does it all mean in the end? Probably seven games, probably seven games. You know what I mean? Bob steals one, Chesterkin steals one. You know the drill. But I, from a goalie perspective, I like the space that we're in. Igor, in terms of allowing more goals than four, is kind of playing his normal thing, which would say to me, the odds, based on these statistics, the odds are in the next seven games series, Igor is going to allow more than four goals once. The odds are, based on how things have gone in the regular season, Bob is way over already in terms of how many times he allows more than four goals so if you're betting the odds, the odds are Bob's going to continue to float along here, allowing 2-1, two, 2-1, one, two, one, two, one. And obviously I like that. Now, that, you know, what happened against all the other teams isn't always what's going to happen against the next set of teams. But I just kind of wanted to dive into the numbers. I had the kind of the sense that Bob, that, that Igor was a little bit more consistent, but Bob had higher end and then lower end. But I did not expect to find what I found at the end there with Shesterkin having allowed more than four goals that many times. That's not insignificant. That's once every seven games. Every, every seven games, he allows more than four goals. That's huge, and that could be the complete difference in this series. If everything else is even and that one statistic pops out its head, that could be the difference between uh, Panthers or Rangers winning the series. So... We shall see. If you appreciate this content, do me a favor. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. I'm going to have a few other videos out. Um, and Colin and I are still streaming the Western Conference Series, as you guys know. And then we're ready. Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Sunday at 3 o'clock. Thanks for the travel schedule at NHL. Thanks.
Thanks a lot. I mean, I get it. I think Monday is Memorial Day. So I get you didn't want to put the extra day of travel in there, but you couldn't make an eight o'clock primetime game, three o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday, Memorial Day weekend. Okay, that's how it's going to be. That's how it's going to be.